you know how geeked out and nerdy I get about certain passages and getting really deeply into the text. Whenever I get into the context, whenever I look at the history, all of these things, sometimes it's just, sometimes it's just overwhelming. So I want to paint a picture for you for a moment. Jesus is with his disciples. He says, hey, let's, let's go. He doesn't say where, but let's go. And they have this big old hike. And the Bible does not record anything that's said it during this hike. About 28 miles. And that's not in the text, but that just from study. So they go to this place. And you might recognize this place. It's called Caesarea Philippi. And this was the place that, you know, Jesus said the famous words, you are Peter on this rock, I will build my church, all those kind of things. Well, they get to Caesarea Philippi, and Caesarea Philippi is a place of such incredible sin and debauchery. It's a mecca for the god, the Greek god Pan. And if there are any kids watching, I'm just going to be very general about this, that there were types of worship going on that really centered on human pleasure. I'll leave it at that. And this was going on all over the place, happening all the time in Caesarea Philippi. So here's Jesus with his disciples standing on, on the edge, and it's like a big old mountain tooth cavity that you can see into and see all of this debauchery going on at all times. And this is when Jesus says, on this rock I'll build my church. Some think he's talking about Peter. Others think he's talking about this kind of scenario that we're in. Caesarea Philippi is a great example of this is where I'm going to build my church, in the midst of the filth. So then Jesus does this, and this is verse 34 of Mark chapter... Uh, sorry, hold that thought for a moment. Chapter 8, Mark chapter 8. It says that the Bible says, and calling to the crowd, and calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them. Now, I want to stop there for a second. In the original language, it says that Jesus shouted to the crowd. So he's not talking to the disciples right now. He's talking to the people, just yelling and probably kind of embarrassing his disciples because they're trying to keep cool, you know, like let's blend in a little bit. Not, not, not that way, but, you know, let's not draw attention to ourselves. And calling to the crowd, shouting with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. See, these people were there committing debauchery, worshiping this false god. A god that, you know, did nothing for people. A god that was false, like I said. And they're trying to get the god's attention. And Jesus is yelling out to them in this moment, if you would just lay down yourself, if you would just follow me, if you would just be my disciple, you will experience a life that's much better than the one that you're living, giving yourself away on a regular basis. For what? For nothing. What we learn from this is that the way of Jesus is a much better way than the world would prescribe. If we follow him with everything that we are, if we, if we just seek to lose our life for him and just give it away for him and follow him, we will experience abundance. It's not always going to be easy. There's going to be some suffering. There's going to be some bruised knees and scuffed up uh, you know, elbows. But Jesus wants us to live life and live it to the full. And his life is the way to go. This life is false. It gives you immediate pleasure in the moment, the, 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 the life that he's pointing to. But he's showing them, you don't need to be this way. You can follow me and, and live a whole different, and you can be a new creation. Are you following Jesus today? I mean, you might not be doing the stuff that they were doing, of course. But 
it makes us wonder, like, how much do we want to sacrifice our comfort even? Let's start on the low end. Our, our just daily comfort. How much are we willing to give away for him? Something to think about today.